the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Do you know what the day is? It's our anniversary, celebrating 106 years of ministry. We thank God for his protection and his provision. And that's what the reason that why we are uh, prosperous. And we just say, thank you, Lord, for all you've done. And so today at 3 p.m., our evening service uh, will be done by another son of our church, Reverend Dr. Jonathan Brown from Pilgrim Baptist Church. Um, he's preaching from Philippians chapter 2, and his titled message is something about the name Jesus. Well, don't you want to know a little bit more about the name Jesus? God bless you. Thank you so much, and continue to keep us in your prayers as we go into our next year um, giving and doing what God asked us to do. What's God bless you. Is? It's your, it's our anniversary, and we praise God for 106 years uh, that we have had his provision uh, and seen his prosperity, and we're so glad uh, that you're here on uh, this day. Um, we're going to stand wherever we are across the building. Stand uh, everywhere, everybody stand, everybody stand. Wanted to make sure that we had everything in place uh, this is a special day, so we wanted to make sure we had everything for our honorees and everyone. And we're going to ask uh, our deacon ministry if they will come and open us in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we adore you. We come to you blessing your holy name. Lord, we come to you with thanks. Thanks for our mothers. Thanks for our faithful eagle servants, our faithful servant eagles. Thank you, Lord, for what they've shown us about grace, about mercy, how they've led the way in showing us how to believe in you. Dear Lord, we ask you to keep us, to guide us, to hold us, to love us, to protect us. When we're going the wrong way, Lord, turn us the right way. Lord, when we're thinking the wrong way, make us think the right way. Lord, let us love more than we hate, Lord. Let us understand power, Lord, and use it only with love. Lord, we ask you that you really keep this church, keep this church in the forefront of the movement here in Avondale. Lord, we ask you bless our leaders. We ask you put a special blessing on Dr. Jonathan Brown this afternoon as he comes back home. We ask all these blessings in the name of your sweet and holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And as uh, music ministry is coming, oh, stand to your feet. We're going to uh, sing a little song. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. Come on, put your hands together. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. I love to heal the whole. Hallelujah. I love to praise him. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I 
love to praise him. I love to praise him. He is the whole. Oh, he's my rock. My rock of my soul and he's the wheel that keeps on a turning in the middle. I know he'll never, no, 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 never. He's just a jewel. I love to praise him. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love to praise him. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love to praise him. I love to. I love to. Early in the morning, I love to. If you love to. Late in the midnight hour. I love I love to, I love to praise his holy name. Amen. We're going to have worship through the Southern Baptist Church Music Ministry. You may be seated. And then we will have our announcement of Mothers and Faithful Servant Eagle Award recognition. Amen. Come 
Good afternoon, Southern. At this time, waiting on pastor, y'all, sorry. Our first mother that we will honor this after afternoon will be Mother Carrie Givens. Her bio will be read by her daughter, Robin Crowley. my best here. I have the moment. <laughs> uh, Carrie Givens has been a member of Southern Baptist Church for 45 years. During her time at Southern, she has worn many hats. She started off as a Sunday school teacher working with the preschool age children. She served on the hospitality committee for many years alongside of her love with Givens. They were always together working together. Carrie also cooked and worked tirelessly as a member of the kitchen committee alongside of her husband. <sighs> Whom we knew as our resident photographer and she truly, and his, she was his trusty assistant. You could find her month, monthly greeting members and guests as she served on the usher board too. Sister Carrie worked for many years in Vacation Bible School and the Youth Committee as her children, Robin and Brian, were growing up as kids and teenagers, serving on the Cotillion Committee to encourage our young debutantes to grow into awesome young women who served the Lord for, 20, for over 20 years plus, wait a minute, for over 20 plus years, she served faithfully as a deaconess and now as a mentor to our up and coming Deaconess Board. Just this, just this August, she served as committee chair for Pastor Larkin's installation services. As you can see, Mother Carrie Givens has served her church and God tirelessly and faithfully for many seasons. Our next mother is Helen M. Jones Barnett. And her bio will be read by her granddaughter, Diamond Ellington. Good afternoon, Saints. Okay. Hem uh, sorry. Helen Marie Walker Barnett Jones was born in Limestone County, Alabama on December 5th, 1935 to parents Willie Ann and Lester E. Walker Sr. Helen gave her life to Christ at an early age and has been faithfully serving God for over 80 years. Helen's journey at Southern Baptist Church began in 1981 after re reuniting with her college sweetheart, Deacon Charles H. Jones. Helen wasted no time becoming involved in various ministries. Helen faithfully served on the Deaconess Board, Sunrise Choir, served as president for many years, Mothers That Pray, Mass Choir, Sunday School, and Vacation Bible School. Helen remains faithful to the, uh, sorry, to the, 
uh, to the Sunday school ministry and regularly attends Sunday worship service. Helen has always been outspoken and is a lover of God's people. She is affectionately known to most as Mama Helen. Mama Helen's love is a tough, no punches spared type of kind of love. <laughs> she is quick to say, if I didn't love you, I would just let you act like a fool and you know that cannot happen on my watch. At Mama Helen's core, she simply wants all all of her loved ones to always be at their best, which is true. When Mama Helen loves you, you have been touched by the best and fully equipped to handle any storm through faith in God, with Mama Helen being the one call or text away. Mama Helen accepts this honor humbly, pledges to fulfill the role wholeheartedly. Thank you. Our next mother we will honor is Mother Ida Kavanaugh, and her bio will be read by her daughter, Janice. Good afternoon, Southern. Candidate Deaconess Ida Vivian Cavanaugh was born August 12, 1931 in Richmond, Kentucky. She was the youngest of nine siblings and now is what she refers to as the last button on Gable's coat. At the tender age of 92, she dedicated her life to Christ at a young age by staying every Sunday on what was known as the mourner's bench. She joined Southern Baptist Church under the leadership of James E. Milton in 1980 as a deaconess. She was also a missionary that fellowship monthly at one another's homes, nursing homes, and homeless shelters. She attended classroom number six Sunday school for many years where my father, the late Deacon Chester Cavanaugh taught. I am proud to share my mother with others at this church in honor for her to become chosen to be one of the mothers here at Southern Baptist Church. She believes in truly being a servant for the Lord. Our final mother this afternoon that we will be honoring is Mother Carrie Smith. Her bio will be read by her daughter, Natom B. As they're coming, I just want to read what uh, each of their uh, plaques read certificate of appointment you have to be appointed to this prestigious place this is the certified that carrie smith is hereby appointed to the role of mother of the southern baptist church recognized on sunday november 19th 2023 titus 2 says this these older women must train the younger women to love their husbands and their children to live wisely and be pure to work in their own homes to do good and to be submissive to their husband, then they will not bring shame on the word of God. Good afternoon. In 1971, Carrie and Calvert with their three children moved to Cincinnati, Ohio. Here, they united with the Southern Missionary Baptist Church where she served for over 40 years. As a member of Southern, Carrie served in a variety of capacities and was a pioneer in many respects, as she became the first woman to provide leadership in many church-related programs that were trad traditionally headed by men. At Southern, she opened a nursery and taught the nursery class for more than 10 years, directed the annual Sunday school pageants under the leadership of Deacon Ed Ellington, introduced and organized the Christian Cotillion for the youth at Southern, introduced the concept to Reverend Milton of decorating the church for Christmas. 
taught teen Bible study classes, taught teen Sunday school classes, served as youth director, served as Sunday school superintendent, served as the first female voted onto the trustee board by the church, served as the chairperson of the trustee board, served as a member of the Christian Education Board, organized, developed, and served as presenter for workshops for youth, women, and the Board of Christian Education, developed and presented materials for Advent, developed and presented, presented materials for Black History programs. All of that and being a wonderful mother for us as well. There are other family members that would like to come down as we take this one pick. Can we give all of these individuals Amen. a rousing round? Come on, Southern, you ought to stand to your feet. Countless years of service to this church and their primary task will be to continue to train those in the next generation. Give them another rousing round. At this time, at this time, we will recognize our favorite faithful servant eagles. Our first faithful servant eagle recipient is my dad, James Brockman, Sr. Brother James Brockman Sr. was born in Greenville, South Carolina. At the tender age of one, he moved to Cincinnati, Ohio. He attended Columbia and Hoffman Elementary Schools and Sawyer Junior High and graduated from Withrow High School. Jimmy, as he's affectionately called, served in the United States Navy and was honorably discharged. After high school, Jimmy obtained an associate's degree from Cincinnati State. Brother Jimmy started his Christian journey at Beams of Heaven and moved his membership along with his late wife Charlene to Southern Baptist Church in 1978. While attending Southern, Jimmy has faithfully served in the media ministry for over 40 years. Whether it's working the soundboard, cameras, or taping, he's done it all. Being present for funerals and church events without missing a beat. He also has filled in as a janitor for the church for many years while the staff is on vacation. Jimmy is also a hard working, many times he helps the hospitality committee, setting up and breaking down events hosted by the church, all with a smile on his face. In his spare time, Jimmy can be found being a constant help to his neighbor, driving her to her doctor's appointments or cutting her grass. Jimmy also enjoys working on cars, assembling furniture for his daughters, <laughs> playing solitaire, cruising, line dancing, and cheering on his Cincinnati Bengals. Jimmy's career included working for nine years at OPW before beginning his career at the VA in Fort Thomas in Cincinnati, where he retired after 23 years of service. Jimmy's favorite scripture is Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Jimmy is the loving husband of Jackie, the doting dad to the late James Archie Jr., 
Marcus, Nakoma, and Natasha. He is also the adoring pawpaw to Damon, Carmel, DJ, and Brielle, and is now the great-grandfather of four, James A. Brockman, Sr. Serving eager recognition is Uncle Ernie, aka Ernest Jackson. And his daughter, Taryn, would like to read for her father. Good afternoon, everyone. Brother Ernest Ernie Jackson was born in Montgomery, Alabama. Ernie was educated at McDavid Elementary and graduated from Booker T. Washington High School. After graduation, Ernie served in the United States Army and was honorably discharged. Ernie is a proud graduate of Stillman College in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. That's where he met the love of his life, Janice, <laughs> whom he has been married to for 53 wonderful years. Uh, it's also where Ernie pledged Omega Sci Fi, <laughs> get it out, which has been a proud and act he's been a proud and active member for over 50 years. After first attending Zion Baptist, Ernie and Janice were led to Southern Baptist Church where they became members in 1973 under the leadership of the late Pastor James E. Milton. Ernie has been a faithful and active member for 50 years and has worn many hats. You catch him smiling wide and greeting members and guests monthly as a member of the Usher Board. Ernie has also worked with our handicap ministry and keeps us safe yearly as our security for Vacation Bible School. He's been our church moderator and helped cooler, clear hands prevail and kept decency and order. Amen. <laughs> He's served as church treasurer and as a faithful trustee. The members always joke Ernie is going to keep the money tight and right. <laughs> Lastly, Ernie served as chairman of the Southern Child Care Board. Ernie retired from Joseph T. Ryerson Company after 30 years of service. In his spare time, he enjoys golfing, working on outreach with the men of Omega Sci-Fi, helping in the communities around Cincinnati, helping build their scholarship fund, to name a few. You can catch him weekly with the men of Omega Walking Club. <laughs> yes. Also, you can catch him annually in February, <laughs> cutting a two-step at the Q Mardi Gras with his SBC nieces. Act the fool. Ernie is the loving husband of Janice, the doting dad to Taryn and Errol, whom he affectionately calls Puddin' and Suge. He's also the coolest G. Diddy to Tristan, Darren, and Drew. His favorite scripture is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Love you, Daddy. Congratulations. As family members are making their way to be a part of this picture, this is what the certificate reads. Uh, this certifies that Ernest Jackson has been duly recognized on Sunday, November 19th for his leadership, outstanding dedication, faithful service, and commitment to excellence here at Southern Baptist Church. It is our prayer that God's greatest blessing will rest upon uh, him now and in the great beyond for his decades of duty. And the scripture reads, and you know it, they will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Come on, let's give all Amen. Come on, family. Come on, Nakoma.
Come on, let's give the Lord another hand praise for every individual, uh, mothers and to those who have uh, served. And as we make this transition, uh, the Bible is very, very, very clear. Uh, when one member uh, suffers, we are to suffer with it. But it also says when one is honored, then we all rejoice. Can you for one more time stand to your feet and give these individuals a marvelous round. 106 years and they have played decades, decades of service. And as mantles pass to the next generation, you have a high bar uh, to take in. Um, if uh, the Pilgrim Choir will make their way uh, into place, uh, I will uh, give very briefly um, introduce uh, the preacher for the hour. I am very simplistic and to the point. And so, uh, number one, uh, nothing new. Uh, he is saved. And somebody ought to shout because in many places they got people in spaces that have the title, but they are not um, belonging to the kingdom in the best way. But not only is he saved, he is a son of this church, which makes it even more special. Amen. He has served here not only uh, in his deacon ministry, uh, but also uh, as a minister of the gospel. And then just lastly, he is sent. Uh, the Lord has sent him to this place on this day to give us encouragement from the Word of God so that we can continue to keep on running. Is there anybody in this house, especially those from Southern, that's not tired yet and you want to keep on running because the best is yet to come? And so after we will hear selections from the Pilgrim Baptist Church Choir, we will hear from the Reverend Dr. Jonathan Brown, Pastor of Pilgrim. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's give God a hair clap of praise. We are here to celebrate nothing but Jesus Christ. We are here to say thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for me. If you know it, put your hands together like this. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh. 
years or something to be excited about. Yeah. Amen. We was going to do another song and something just start clicking in my head and you couldn't have done this if you didn't have a great God. You couldn't have done this if God didn't bring you through. So we just want to take a moment to say how great is our God. But today we're going to do something special because when we sing this, you all should be singing it because you know how great your God is. Amen. You ought to put your hands together right now and give God some praise. How great is our God? A splendor of a king Closed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice Let all the earth he wrapped himself in light And the very darkness tries to hide They tremble at his voice They tremble at his 
good God, and he's worthy to be praised. I am super excited to be here one more time. I certainly know that God did not have to allow it, but he did it, and for that I am thankful. Now, I must admit that uh, when the choirs were singing, I was looking around, and I was saying to myself, if you can't get excited about what they've been singing about, I'm not quite sure what I'm, my preaching is going to do anything for you. Amen, somebody. Well, I won't be before you long. I am certainly indebted and so thankful to your pastor, uh, Pastor Larkin, for extending this invitation uh, to Pastor uh, Ellington, who was our nine o'clock speaker. To the associate ministers here, to all of our deacons that are here, our deaconesses, all the members of Southern, uh, all of our visitors as well, to uh, my family, uh, to the Pilgrim family who will not allow me to go anywhere by myself, uh, to our deacons and to my City Gospel Mission family that's here as well. I certainly greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, I promise I won't be before you long, uh, but I do covet your prayers. Uh, I ask that you pray with me and then pray for me. And then while you're at it, it's all right to pray for yourselves. As we were honoring the mothers tonight, uh, my heart just got super excited for each of you well-deserved Mother Jones, Mother Cavanaugh, Mother Smith, and uh, Sister K Mother Carrie. Amen. And then I heard Ernie's name and something else came over me. <laughs> but I do greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I, I would, uh, if you would, for my wife to stand. Uh, come on, honey, stand up. I, I need to, no, 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 stand, stay up, stand, stand up. I, I, need, I need the people to know what I'm working with. Amen. And so she's, that's my wife for 30 years. And so if by chance, I'll say anything about me around her, uh, she gonna get you. Amen. Amen. All right, well, listen, I do cover your prayers. I do ask that you pray with me and pray for me, and then while you're at it, it's all right to pray for yourselves. It is a, um, an awesome, awesome opportunity to come and proclaim God's holy word. And so if you have your uh, Bibles with you, uh, I ask that you would join me to uh, go to the book of Philippians. The book of Philippians, uh, if you have your Bibles with you. Uh, Philippians chapter 2. Uh, I have chapter 2, verse 9 through 11. And uh, you can get out your smartphones or your, your Bibles that are, that you have brought along with you. Uh, and pretty soon it'll be on the monitor, I'm sure. Um, but I do need you to read along with me. If you have it, say amen. Yes. Uh, let us read along together. Wherefore God has also have highly exalted him. This is Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. You want to make note of that. I have the King James Version, but whatever translation you have is more than sufficient. And whatever translation you have, I ask that you read along with me. Wherefore God also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. You may be seated. Now I'm going to need you to say amen every now and again. 
because if you don't say amen every now and again, I'm going to have to start all the way over from the beginning. Okay, I got some people walking with me now. I want to talk to you for the, about 22 minutes. Just give me about 22 minutes uh, from the title of There's Something About That Name. There's just something about that name. As we celebrate uh, 106th anniversary of Southern, I believe we ought to just pause and praise God that Southern is still standing. Yeah. Southern, the, the people of God have endured chaos and calamity. You've endured pain, problems, and proclivities. And you've even endured a pandemic. You've endured danger and division, trials and trouble, turbulence, separation, sickness, surgeries, and suffering. You've also endured anguish, agony, and death, depression, and destruction, deterioration of relationships, but through it all, God is still good. God is still good. Why? Because the Bible says, in all, nay, in all those things, we were made more than conquerors through him that loved us. Uh, you are still here to have life and have life more abundantly. We can praise him because God has given us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God is still good. Um, and I want to tell you that uh, you're still here because you are a child of God. Um, and can I tell you who you really are? You are an heir of salvation. A sinner saved by grace, you were created in his image, you are designed for his purpose, planted in his goodness, covered in his grace, showered in his mercy, dipped in his love, transformed by this world, flawed but still favored, fragile but still faithful, and wonderfully and marvelously made. I'm trying to tell you that God is still good. Uh, my circumstances does not circumvent the care of Jesus Christ. I wanna tell you that God is good. Southern, if you're going to exist for another 106 years, I need you to remember his name, and his name is Jesus. Because a name, my brothers and sisters, Southern's name ought to mean something. It, it, uh, every one of us possesses a name that was given to us by some member of your family, maybe your parents or your grandparents. In our community, our parents uh, used to name their children if you remember, after someone significant in the family or in the community. Names were given after entertainers like, uh, like Jackie or Aretha or, or Ray uh, because parents were reminded uh, that what was the song that was playing when they first met. Uh, I might as well go ahead and say it since I'm in good company. Uh, I might as well say it that you were conceived uh, while that song was playing. Uh, there used to be some, there used to be significance uh, to some names. For example, my name, Jonathan, it's a biblical name. It means gift or it means uh, a gift given of God. And however, there are some names today that makes absolutely no sense. Uh, names like uh, Bumquisha Alopecia or Wild Irish Rose or names that are spelled one way and pronounced another way. Uh, but, well, here it is, but there are some names that elicit favorable responses. Names like when you say it, you feel good on the inside. Names like uh, Theodore Berry or names like Marion Spencer or names like Dr. Martin Luther King or names like um, Nelson Mandela, names like uh, Malcolm X, but I, I know a name that's really above all of those names. There, there are some great names like Rosa Parks, some names, great names like Shirley Chisholm, some great names like Maxine Waters, Elijah Cummings, but my brothers and sisters, I still know a name that's above those names. There, there are some historic names that when you think about it, it just makes you feel good on the inside. Names like uh, George Washington Carter, Carver, names like Pastor Jesse Watson, uh, names like Pastor James E. Milton, pa names like uh, C. Dennis Edwards, names like President Barack 
Obama, but even with all of those names, I still know a name that's above all of those names as well. Can I ask you a question? What is your name? Go ahead. What's your name? Jackie? What's your name? Ernie? What's your name? Blanche? What's your name? Carolyn? Dan? I know that's your name, but I still know a name that's above all of those names. I think I'm in here by myself. And his name, if you didn't know what name I was talking about for the last 12 minutes, I've been talking about his name and his name is Jesus. The name is in the text. If you have time, God has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. And you ask the question, go ahead and ask, why is his name exalted? Go ahead and ask. Well, if you got your Bibles, you can go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 through 8. The Bible says, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but God made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. One day you're going to start shouting when you hear scripture. And the Bible says, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. In other words, he emptied himself into a body of weakness and contamination to come to me because I could not get to him. He came down here because we couldn't get up there. When I call on the name of the Lord, when I call on the name of Jesus, Jesus, uh, there's something that those that know that name, uh, you ought to feel something on the inside. And if you don't know, if you don't feel something on the inside, then I have to wonder if you really know that name. Uh, I think I'm in here by myself because when I think about that name, uh, there's power in that name. There's a uh, peace in that name. There's protection in that name. There's salvation in that name. I got all day. There's sin killing in that name. There's hope in that name. There's happiness in that name. There's joy in that name. There's, I don't see nobody up in here. There's jubilance in that name. There's love uh, in that name. There's long suffering in that name. There's healing in that name. Now, you can't, if, if you've never been sick before, you wouldn't know anything about that healing in that name. There's recovery in that name. There's deliverance in that name. There's care in that name. I think I'm in here by myself. Uh, there's covering in that name. There's a cure in that name. You seek, uh, there's a cure right there in that name. Uh, there's rescue, rescue in that name. There's relief in that name. You going through something, uh, there's relief in that name. There's shouting in the name of Jesus. Uh, when I was a child just a couple of weeks ago, my brothers and sisters when I attended Southern uh, my mama uh, yeah with my mother we would sit right over there right where you are uh, and at the mention of the name of Jesus born again baptized believers uh, would just start shouting uh, Pastor Milton would say something to the co congregation uh, he'd say something about what you say uh, about Jesus uh, and Mother Hines would be sitting right there uh, and she'd shout and say he's alright uh, and then Pastor Milton would turn to the other side uh, uh, to the church and say what you say uh, about the name Jesus uh, and then Deacon Ellington would shout uh, he's alright uh, is there anybody here this afternoon uh, that's able to shout he's all right uh, is there anybody here not ashamed uh, to testify uh, that our Lord is all right is he all right with you uh, say yes uh, if he's all right with you every Thing the born again baptized believer leads uh, is in that name. Whatever you need is in that name. He's all right. I just feel good all by myself up in here. Let me come on down. Now there he is, my brothers and sisters. Uh, there is significance in that name. Uh, I said that you didn't write that down. Here it is. I'm, I came to Southern. I had to study. You have a great theologian uh, as a pastor, and so I had to study their significance in that name. Uh, his earthly parents, Joseph and Mary, they did not give him that name, Jesus. Uh, you remember while Joseph was thinking about uh, how he could get rid of uh, a pregnant Mary because she was pregnant, uh, but he had not touched her. Uh, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream and said, uh, uh, yeah, she is going to bring forth a son, uh, and you ought to call his name? Jesus, you still walk with me, uh, for he shall save the people uh, from their sins. 
In other words, the name Jesus just simply means Jehovah is salvation. The name Jesus is really a portrait of God the Father. God does not love us because Jesus died for us. Jesus died for us because God loves us. Let me try that one more time because I don't think you got it. God does not love us because Jesus died for us. Jesus died for us because God loves us. He sent Jesus to take our place on the cross. He became sin for us. He who knew no sin that we might be made in the righteousness of God in him. I'm saying something all by myself. Let me try it again because you're looking at me like I'm Alice in Wonderland. Let me try it again. There are some names in the Bible like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, uh, but when they died, nothing happened. Uh, when the names of in names in the Bible like Moses, Joshua, and Obed, uh, but when they died, nothing happened. Uh, other names like Ruth, uh, yes, and Samuel and Ezra and Nehemiah, but when they died, nothing happened. Uh, names like David, Isaiah, and Jeremiah, uh, but when they died, nothing happened. Ezekiel, famous names in the Bible like Daniel. I need a Bible reader here. Uh, Hosea, Obadiah, and Nahum, uh, Habakkuk, famous names, but when they died, uh, nothing happened. Uh, Zechariah and Malachi in the Bible, uh, Matthew, Mark, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, but when they died, nothing happened uh, because when they died, uh, their names died along with them uh, because there is no salvation uh, in those names. Uh, but when Jesus died uh, on a blood-stained hill, uh, on an old rugged cross, uh, and if I had had more time, I would tell you he died. Didn't he die? He died. He died. He died. I said he died. He died. The earth shook, rattled, and rolled. The graves gave up her sick and the S-U-N refused to shine. The centurion soldier standing next to the cross said, surely this is the Son of God. But then early Sunday morning, don't rush me now, but when the name of Jesus is called, everyone that is saved, everyone that is selected, everyone that is sanctified, everyone is secured uh, ought to know that there is power in the name of Jesus. Uh, I'm just getting excited all by myself. Uh, here it is. There is significance in that name. Uh, and then there is submission in that name. Uh, because the name, the Bible says... Uh, that at the name of Jesus, uh, every knee should bow uh, of things in heaven uh, and things in earth uh, and things under the earth. I'm just in the text, my brothers and sisters. Uh, not only is there significance, uh, but there's also submission uh, in that name. Uh, because at the name of Jesus, uh, every knee should bow. Uh, it doesn't matter where you are. Uh, it doesn't matter who you are. Uh, you could be an angel or a saint uh, in heaven. Every angel shall bow. Uh, every, every king shall bow. Uh, every potentate shall bow. Uh, every emperor shall bow. Uh, every president, every Putin, every Trump, uh, every queen, uh, everything living on the earth uh, shall bow. Uh, Satan shall bow. Uh, his demons shall bow. Uh, the unsaved that are going to hell shall bow. Uh, and no matter where you are, uh, the Bible says that every knee uh, uh, shall bow. Uh, you still not walking with me. Give me four more minutes minutes. I'm going to sit on down. Now, the Apostle Paul writes uh, in Romans chapter 4 verse 11, uh, 14 and 11, if you still got your Bibles open, uh, he says, as I live, said the Lord, uh, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue uh, shall confess to God. Uh, Isaiah, you remember Isaiah in the Old Testament. Uh, he comes with us uh, in chapter 45 uh, and verse number 23. Uh, he says, I have sworn by myself uh, that the word has gone out of my mouth uh, is righteousness shall not return. Uh, and then here it is. Uh, and then he says that, that unto me uh, that every knee shall bow uh, and every tongue uh, shall swear. Uh, and can I tell somebody uh, that at the mention of that name, uh, something begins to happen. Uh, I need a witness about right now. I need somebody to testify uh, that at the name of Jesus, uh, something begins to happen. Uh, I need a Bible reader about right now. Uh, you remember at the wedding of Galilee, uh, the couple had ran out of wine. Uh, Mary, Joe, Jesus' mother, calls to Jesus 
and says they have run out of wine. Uh, and she says, uh, whatever he says to do, uh, that's what I want you to do. Uh, and somewhere between the dipping and the sipping, uh, the water became extraordinary wine. Uh, I told you there's something special uh, about that name. Uh, you still don't hear me. Uh, you remember they were out in a desert place uh, and all Kroger's had clothes. Uh, Walmart had clothes. Uh, the disciples called Jesus uh, and said they were going to send the mom multitude away uh, because uh, they was going to send them home because they didn't have anything to eat. Uh, Jesus says, wait a minute here. Uh, here's what I want you to do. I want you to feed them. Uh, they said there's only two fish uh, and five loaves of bread. Uh, and so Jesus took the five loaves uh, and two fish and he began to look up into heaven. Uh, he blessed the bread, uh, blessed the food and break it in and the loaves and the fish just started multiplying uh, to feed 5,000 men, uh, not counting women and children. Uh, I keep telling you there is something uh, about that name. Uh, you remember on the storm, on the, there was a storm on the sea. Uh, the disciples woke up Jesus Christ uh, because Jesus was asleep on the ship. Uh, here it was. They were afraid. They were scared. Uh, and the ship was covered with waves. Uh, the disciples called to Jesus uh, and said, save us uh, unless we perish. Uh, Jesus just looked at the wind uh, and spoke to the raging sea uh, and said, peace be still. Uh, there's something about that name Jesus. Uh, oh, you still don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm going to keep on going. I need, I told you only needed three more minutes. Uh, but immediately after the disciples saw Jesus uh, walking on water, uh, Jesus says, be of good cheer. Uh, it is I, be not afraid. Uh, and Peter said, Lord, uh, if it's really you, uh, bid me to come on and walk on the water with you. Uh, and Jesus says, come on a little closer. Uh, Peter got off the ship. Uh, one thing we know about Peter, at least he got off the ship. Uh, and he began to walk on the water uh, to go to where Jesus was. Uh, the water began, to, uh, Peter began to sink on the water uh, simply because he took his eyes off Jesus. Uh, uh, my brothers and sisters, if I need to park in parenthetically and share with you that if you want to keep walking, keep celebrating uh, with the Lord. Uh, don't take your eyes uh, off Jesus. Uh, if you need another 106 years, uh, keep your eyes on Jesus. Uh, Peter called unto the Lord, uh, Lord, save me. Uh, and Jesus stretched forth his hand uh, and caught him. Uh, did I tell you already uh, there is something about that name of Jesus? Uh, I don't say it that name more than once uh, and you still looking at me. Uh, well, let me try it again. Uh, here while on his way home. Uh, Jairus house, uh, a woman, uh, yeah, uh, with an issue of blood for 12 long years, uh, 144 months. Uh, she was walking in the crowd. Uh, the woman said that if I could touch the H-E-M uh, of his garment, uh, I'll simply be made whole. Uh, Jesus said, uh, said somebody touched me. Uh, he turned around, uh, but when Jesus stopped, uh, the blood stopped. Uh, but can I correct her theology? Uh, because there was no power in the H-E-M of his garment, but there's plenty of power in the H-I-M. Is there anybody here know anything about the name of Jesus? Wait a minute. I've been in Southern for over 30 some odd years. I don't have to go to a wedding of Galilee, nor do I have to go to the desert place where there was a few fish and a few barley loaves because I can look around this sanctuary right now now, uh, and somebody ought to be able to testify uh, that there is some power uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, let me see if you're going to walk with me. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question, uh, and you go ahead and answer the question uh, the way that you think is the correct answer. Uh, who woke you up this morning? Who started you on your way this morning? Uh, who gave you blood that's still running warm in your body? Uh, who put feelings in your hands this morning. Uh, if, if he's done all that for you, uh, I'm sure uh, that you can get up off your feet uh, and tell the Lord thank you uh, because if God has been good to you, uh, you have no problems uh, 
praising his holy name. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, now praise uh, is the blessings that you give God. Uh, praise uh, is the blessings that you give God uh, the, for the blessings uh, that you already have. Uh, in other words, God has already blessed you. Uh, and as I look around this room, uh, there's been some of y'all, uh, you've been looking at me uh, like I stole something from you. Uh, I ain't stole nothing from you. Uh, I just came to encourage you uh, to tell you uh, how good uh, the God is. Uh, I'm going to go home and go on to my seat, uh, but you do know who I'm talking about uh, because I've been talking about that name uh, for the last 18 minutes uh, because there is power in that name. Uh, there is love in that name. Uh, do you know what his name is? Uh, and as we celebrate uh, 106 years uh, at Southern Baptist Church, uh, let us not forget that name uh, because somebody can remember uh, when Pastor Milton would say, uh, he's bread when you're hungry. Uh, he's water when you're thirsty. Uh, he's a rock in a weary land. Uh, oh, you don't remember that. Uh, he's a shelter in the time of storms. Uh, you know his name. Uh, what's his name? Uh, well, wait a minute. Uh, he's the bright and the morning star. Uh, he's the lily of the valley. Uh, he's the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, what's his name? Uh, I still don't hear nobody. Uh, he's Adam's redeemer. Uh, he's Abraham's sacrifice. Uh, I still don't hear nobody. Uh, what's his name? Uh, he's Noah's ark. Uh, he's Joshua's battle axe. Uh, he's Gideon's fleets. Uh, he's Samson's power. Uh, he's Daniel's music. Uh, he's Solomon's wisdom. Uh, what's his name? Uh, I still don't hear nobody. Uh, he's uh, Jeremiah's bomb uh, in Gilead. Uh, he's God's only son. Uh, he's Mary's baby boy. Uh, he's James and Jude's baby brother. Uh, what's his name? Uh, he's Matthew's king. Uh, he's Mark's suffering servant. Uh, he's Luke's great physician. Uh, I'm trying to ask you what's his name uh, and I still don't hear nobody. Uh, I think I'm in here all by myself. Uh, Y'all don't let me come home uh, and get excited all by myself. Uh, I need a praise party. Uh, just give me 10 uh, and I'll make 11. Uh, I'll go home after this uh, and tell somebody uh, how good God is. Uh, God has been good to me. Uh, I don't mind shouting his name. Uh, Jesus uh, in the morning. Uh, Jesus uh, in the midday hour. Uh, Jesus uh, in the evening time. Uh, am I in here by myself? Uh, do you know who I'm talking about? Uh, say yes. Uh, say yes. Uh, say yes. for the Lord who is on our side. Where will we be? There are other churches that unfortunately have been shut down. The doors have closed and those places are not remembered. But God has blessed us beyond measure to give us 106 years. Somebody ought to give God a praise. But it is not the power of the people, but it is the power of the Christ. And if we will keep our eyes focused on him as we stand all over this house, there may we be one in this house who you hear the name, but you haven't felt the presence. We want to offer him to you. If you'll extend your hands as our way, turn to the right and the left and ask the individuals, do you know a man from Galilee? And if you're in sin, he will set you free. And if you know who Jesus is and you've already made 
uh, that connection, can you just raise your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. But then he charges us to remember uh, who he is in everything that we go and do. And can we just practice a little bit of heavenly worship right down here? Something about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. Come on, help me. Something about? trustees uh, make their way. Members, we have been asked to give to do the best that we can do. They're so kind to me to keep it the same way. Thank you. On this side, this will go uh, to Pastor uh, Jonathan Brown. Can we give him another 
good day, a great day. We again uh, want to congratulate our, our new mothers. So remember, you gotta put a little stank on that name now, mother. Amen. We got mothers. And then uh, to our uh, two uh, faithful eagles serving Amen. award uh, individuals, will we give them another hand? And then to all of you, Pilgrim, thank you for coming and uh, blessing us. Can we give Pilgrim a big southern hand? Amen. And uh, other guests uh, who are in the house. Now, I, I got to just say this, and then I'm going to turn it over. Um, it's so good to see uh faces uh, who have not forgotten this place and thank you for coming and uh, typically typically I would call uh, Cookie up to sing but I'm not going to do it today. She just today not, no, I won't do it today. When she come next time she already know. Uh, sometimes you just want to come in and be a part of uh, the worship and I don't want to tax her. Uh, I know she's excited uh, here just celebrating with her mom but uh, we praise God for you and uh, Coach over there on the side. Amen. Coach Jackson mom, mom, Coach here. Kevin Deacon Wells made it back in the house. I told him anytime, come on and see as he's helping us on other things. Can you give him a hand as well? And so um, without further ado, um, after this service, at the conclusion of this service, you may exit this way to the fellowship hall or this way to the fellowship hall, uh, and then you can uh, celebrate and fellowship. Everybody say this phrase though, for a little while. For a little while. And I know it's been good, it's been good, but you can't stay here forever. So go in there, celebrate, uh, have some cake or whatever they have. And can we give uh, Sister Natasha Edwards and her uh, hospitality group a hand? Thank Sister Banks for uh, putting the programs together. We don't do that much uh, uh, anymore. Um, we just do it for special occasions. And then we're just grateful for all the clergy that are here. Thank you, Pastor Ellington, for blessing us this morning. And then, uh, We'll have our closing remarks by the Reverend Dr. Jonathan Brown. Come on, give him a hand. family uh, for being with me today. So God bless you. Our voices of Pilgrim, thank you so much. Our deacons from Pilgrim who showed up, thank you so much for not allowing your pastor to go anywhere by himself. And so thank you so much. And then to my uh, Southern family, uh, I simply love you all. Amen. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. I know I'm supposed to be giving closing remarks, but when I look at uh, Mother Jones, uh, Mother Jones helped me to become the educator that I became. And then I look at Sister uh, Mother Cavanaugh. You know, Mother Cavanaugh been fine for over 50, 60 years. used to tell her husband that, but he balled his hand up and, and uh, say, don't you go near my wife, but uh, oh my goodness, and so it's just mighty nice to be here one more time. Jo Brother Joseph, are you over there? Can we do it the way we do it? We cannot do it? Yeah, come on, come on, Brother Joseph, let's do it the way we do it at home. Well, listen, it's mighty nice to be here, but we got to go. And so let us stand as we close. Let the church stand. Let, let the church. Let the church. Come on, Brother Joseph. We don't need no music. Let the church. Say amen. Thank you.
Come on, somebody, praise God. Praise the Lord. 